Hello, since we're having a snow day, I'm looking at worksheets. And I'm looking at worksheet two for this class. And these are things that you sort of look up and read about. One thing that probably is the most confusing is this BH curve. So within the BH curve, I want to show you um, what a BH curve looks like. Magnetic field strength is in H and your flux density is in B. So how, how do I get H? That A stands for amps, T stands for turns. So if I have a current running through a coil with a certain number of turns and it's got a distance in meters so you can stretch it out or make it thin you generate a field strength and this field strength sets up a magnetic flux density or a B field around that conductor some things to notice about a curve is I asked for iron as compared to air what you notice about the air flux curve is it is a perfectly straight line it's very predictable it's also very weak so um, it's not often used if you want a stronger field you put some kind of core into your inductor in order to make your magnetic field stronger and here's the one for steel here's the one for iron and you get a higher flux density the drawback to the higher flux density is it does what we call it saturates so it's no longer a straight line that's very predictable it can only get so great and I don't know what the max is for iron. I think steel's 1.6. That's the saturation level. You can't get a stronger field than that. With air, theoretically, you can get as strong a field you want. However, you will have a lot of ampere turns per meter. So that is what a BH curve looks like. And magnetization and how things interact with each other, that's part of the worksheet. And I wanted to... I wanted to show that. The other thing I want to show is down here at the bottom. How do I do this problem? And then of course I went to the wrong page. There it is. Um, how do I do 13 through 20? Okay, I now have a 24 volt, 60 hertz power supply, series capacitive reactants of 200 ohms connected to a parallel resistor and inductor combination back to the power supply. My resistance is 250, my inductive reactance is 15 ohms. So I'm going to put a spreadsheet in here because I want to populate values. I don't want to use the values I gave you on the on the worksheet so I'm gonna make my source 20 and I'm gonna make that volts and I'm gonna make my frequency um, 75 and that will be in Hertz it's always important to put a unit with a value I give you a series capacitive reactance of 200 ohms so I'm giving you the capacitive reactance in ohms so you don't have to do the calculation. So if I use 150, and if you don't want to look for a symbol, you can just type out ohms. Then we have to figure out what uh, value of capacitance that is. And down here for reference, I put the formula that you'd use in Excel. So basically here's my formula x sub c is 1 divided by 2 times pi and this is how you do pi in a spreadsheet times the frequency times your capacitive react or capacitance well we need the c because i gave you the x sub c so what we're going to do is algebraically we can multiply both sides by c divide both sides by x sub c and we basically swap their positions so my C then is equal to 1 divided by, open parentheses, 2 times pi. 
times. My frequency is 75 hertz. So I'm going to reference that cell. That happens to be A4 times. And now I need my capacitive reactants in ohms. So that would be C2. Close parentheses. And I get a value that is 1.4147 e to the fifth. This e is your scientific notation, so this is 10 to the negative fifth. So if I want to make this smaller, 10 to the minus 6, this has to get bigger. So basically that would be 14. <coughs> and we'll just leave it at 14. We'll go ahead and round the decimal. e to the minus 6. Or 14 micro farads. Both of these would be in farads. And it went ahead and corrected my scientific notation, even though I told it not to. That's funny. Okay. So I rounded it, made this bigger by one. That got smaller. And then I could use my engineering prefix. So I got 14 microfarads. I've got to do the same thing for L. And my inductive reactance is 15 ohms. We're going to make it 30. 7 ohms and then what is my inductive reactance here's the other formula this one's a little harder to do if you got X of L and you need to find L you basically have to divide by the 2 pi frequency so my L then becomes equals my X of L which is E2 divided by open parentheses 2 times pi times frequency which is a4 and then I can close parentheses and that will give me my L this will give it to me in Henry's and if I want to, I can say that is 78.5 millihenries. So let's control X and control V that down and say this. I can use an engineering unit here and say it's 78.5 millihenries. Okay. Resistance. I said resistance is 200 ohms, 250 ohms. So I'm going to make my resistance um, something less than 250, let's say 160 ohms. So these are the values I'm going to use. The nice thing is, since I use the formula part of XL, if I go in here and change my frequency, say I want to do 80 hertz all my numbers change well this one won't change because it's it was typed in so I want to go back to 75 <laughs> everything's back to where I want it this gives me the values I then use in LT spice so I gotta pull up LT spice and I want it to where I can get to some of this so let me slide this over and then get LT spice going so we can build that circuit. Um, this is a circuit that I had built otherwise. I need a capacitor. I need it rotated and I need it put in there. And then I need an inductor and a resistor and um, parallel. Okay. Um, that should take care of that. I'm going to go ahead and label this. One, two, three. You can label the nodes anything you want. It's a little backwards from what I normally do, but that's okay. 
And my two can go away so we can cut you out. Gotta connect my dots and set up my voltages. All right, so my voltage is, I can't remember, my voltage is 20 volts, 75 hertz. My analysis will be at 75 hertz. So uh, I'm going to go to advanced, and I'm going to do 75 don't have to worry about phase. Got to make sure the DC goes away. Click OK. So now I got a 75 volt AC source. It's supposed to be 20. The frequency is 75. So 20. OK. My capacitive reactance is 14 micro. So I come in here and say 14 micro. And to solve it in Spice, you have to go back to the farads. That's why I did this step over here in Excel. My inductive reactance is 78.5 milli. 78.5 milli. And my resistance was going to be 160 ohms. <coughs> And then that's done. I'm not going to do DC analysis. I'm going to do... Uh, lost my scissors. I want to do an AC analysis. So I'm going to simulate AC analysis. I'm going to do a single point sweep so it can be a linear. One... 75 hertz, 75 hertz, okay, alrighty, and now I should be able to simulate the circuit, run it, okay, it tells me the voltage at 3 is 20, the voltage at um, node 1 is 6.17, and it tells me that I have some differences in phase angle there which is what we went over last time and I have a current through my capacitor and a current through my inductor and my resistor and the current there in my capacitor in a DC circuit they should numerically add up to that but remember you got phase angles so you got some phase angles you've got to resolve so everything should line up. And what I asked for in the worksheet was to find all the voltage drops, uh, all the currents, and all the powers. Well, you got your currents right here. They are in polar complex form. You have your voltages at the nodes, and they are in polar complex form. So to find the voltage drop across the capacitor, what you'd have to do is convert it to rectangular and subtract 1 from 3 to get this voltage. You already know it's current. Now to calculate power, um, you have to multiply the I times its conjugate times um, the resistance and that would be the only power that you could calculate capacitors and inductors do not have power only resistors so if I take my current through R1 it says it is 38.5 38.6 milliamps at an angle of 163 Okay, so it's 38.5 milli. And 
was 160 something. 163 was the angle. And 163. Okay. If this is the magnitude and this is the angle, what's the complex conjugate? For a polar form, all you do is change the uh, the uh, sine of the angle. So my conjugate of this magnitude and angle is <clears throat> 38.5 milli. And my angle is minus 163. Now when I multiply these two together, because I got an I squared, what do I get? Well, what happens when I multiply the polar form of complex numbers, I add the angles. So 163 plus a negative 163 add up to zero. So basically, instead of using I squared, you multiply by the conjugate. And what you're doing is you're making the angle go to zero. So basically it's 38.5 squared and my value of resistance is 160. So my power for the resistor and again resistors are the only thing that dissipate power. So, I'm going to designate that a little bit. Alright, it's equal to 38.0.0385. I went back to base units. I'm going to square it. And then I'm going to multiply it times my 160. Now my unit will be in watts. because I went back to base units, got rid of the milli, base units times resistance in base units give me power in base units. So that was that is sort of how you go about solving that problem. I didn't exactly find the voltage drop across the capacitor, but your analysis has all the information there. If you have to, you convert this to rectangular and subtract. So it'd be 20 angle 0 minus 6.17 minus 163 or at 106, 163 and you just subtract those. You can probably find an app that'll do it directly. I don't think Scilab will. <clears throat> and that's why we usually convert. Once we convert we can bring it back to the polar. <coughs> anyway, that is how you go about solving the problem. This is how that question would look at the bottom. Again, all the values are different. You don't have to label the nodes like I did. But this is the analysis we're looking for. Thanks for watching.